Good morning, and welcome to this press conference announcing the Caribbean Zonal Volleyball Association's Under-23 Volleyball Tournament. Joining us for the press conference today is the Minister of Youth, Sports, Culture, and Heritage, the Honorable Bernie Bush, from the Cayman Islands Volleyball Federation, Dr. Trevor Thoreau, the Technical Director, Mr. Kevin Solomon, the Treasurer, and sisters and members of the Under-23 squad, Anya and Brianna De La Pena. I will now invite the minister to bring remarks. Thank you, Ventisha. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for this joint announcement by the Cayman Islands Volleyball Association and the Ministry of Youth, Sports, Culture, and Heritage. In September 2022, the Cayman Islands Volleyball Federation is set to host the Caribbean Zonal Volleyball Association under 23 youth competition on our shores here in the Cayman Islands. For the very first time, this will happen. On behalf of the Cayman Islands government and my ministry, I congratulate the Volleyball Association on its dedication, hard work, and success in accomplishing the honor of attracting this international volleyball tournament to our islands. The Kosova Under-23 Youth Tournament, which will be played on our newly renovated courts on Seven Mile Beach, is a significant step in the reappearance of international volleyball to Cayman following the advent of COVID and also the re relocation of real sand that mysteriously disappeared from our beach. Prior to COVID two years ago, the Federation's earlier efforts led to Cayman hosting the North Seca Champions 10 Championship 10 times between the government and the Olympic Committee and the National Federation, we've had success at this tournament. The inaugural hosting of Kosovo, uh, the inaugural hosting of this event from the 2nd to the 4th of September, 2022, will attract more than 16 two-person teams. The competition promises to be four days of fast-paced volleyball on our world-famous Seven Mile Beach. The Federation and the Ministry encourages all sports fans to come out and support our local and regional players. We hope that you will take this opportunity to enjoy the games, our beach, and the tournament, which signals the long-anticipated reemergence of one of our focus sports onto the international stage. In closing, I would like to wish our local teams good luck, and would like to ask the public to come out and support our local teams. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Minister. I now pass it over to Dr. Thoreau, who will speak on the importance of hosting this tournament and what it does to the development of our Caymanian athletes. Dr. Thoreau. Thank you, and good morning to everyone. Um, this volleyball tournament is uh, significant in the developmental plans of the Cayman Islands Volleyball Federation. Um, the young players have been working extremely hard in developing their skills and both in the technical side and the tactical side in preparation for such an event. Um, the key in giving these young players support is that they are all under the age of uh, right now 20 and they are looking forward to representing Cayman at this tournament. Um, they first will be traveling to Trinidad to take part in the August tournament. Um, the next two, three weeks, and then they'll be flying back here to represent Cayman again um, in the under-23 tournament. Um, I'm really excited uh, for the opportunity for these girls, that these girls will have, and the, the guys also. Um, we are working on preparing the guys to also participate in the under-23 tournament. Um, again, this has been part of the strategic developmental plan of the CIVF to really focus on youth development um, and really expose our um, talent to the rest of the world. This is an, a great opportunity for our kids to demonstrate what they have learned um, on the courts and place it into more of a competition setting. Um, so I know the girls are excited. I know the guys are excited. I know um, Cayman Islands should be excited um, and really come out and support these young athletes and um, uh, um, it's, it's a great, just a great opportunity for Cayman Islands. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thoreau. I'm now going to ask Mr. Kevin Solomon, the Volleyball, Volleyball of Federation's treasurer, 
to speak on the history of the Volleyball Federation and the work that has been done to get the play, uh, to be a place for hosting this exciting event. Yeah, thank you. Morning, everyone. Um, what I would say is that Volleyball has been around in the Cayman Islands for a lot of years in terms of uh, it's certainly been an area in terms of sport that a lot of people have enjoyed. Um, the Federation itself was actually founded in 1976. Um, we registered with the FIVB and um, in terms of, you know, just kind of where, where volleyball has come in the Cayman Islands. Uh, I joined uh, the board in 2015 and I think at that stage we were going through a bit of a reset um, and at that point, we reintroduced beach leagues. We reintroduced the national the national league in terms of indoor. Um, and in 2017, really started focusing in on an actual youth development program. Um, and that was, you know, kind of where things began. Uh, we've had some of these juniors that have been playing with us since 2017, 2018, so a number of years. Um, and I think things really jumped forward uh, 2020 when we were actually made a focus sport and that was good we were we actually had the funding at that stage to you know bring in coach trevor um, and really in a sense uh progress the development of the young players that much more um having a you know full-time technical director and you know very qualified coach on island uh, so you know it, it's been an exciting time um and we've definitely seen volleyball uh, take many strides um, over the last uh, certainly over the last few years Thank you, Mr. Solomon. On the panel today, we do have two of the under 23 players. They are sisters, Anya and Brianna Della Pena. Anya being 17 years old and Brianna being a very young 15. I'm going to invite the ladies if they'd like to talk about what they are looking forward to with this tournament. Um, so first of all, Having been with the Federation for such long years, as Coach Kevin said, um, since 2017, uh, this will be my first time representing the country internationally on the international stage, which is very exciting, to say the least. And for my partner to be my sister is just a cherry on top of a cake. So. <laughs> Uh, we are very excited, very thrilled to finally have a youth pr representation in this sport, for sure, um, and to represent our country. Yeah. Brianna, would you like to say anything? Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to say I'm really thrilled and excited to be able to represent Cayman in Trinidad, especially with my sister, and I'm just excited to gain exposures from playing with other players and just learn more. Thank you, ladies. At this time, I'm going to invite our media partners who are here with us, if they have any questions for the panel, to please step forward and, and ask their questions. Hi, good morning, panel. I'm uh, Dion Anglin with Radio Cayman. I um, just want to find out how many teams are able, you guys are able to facilitate for this tournament, and who are they? Not, not the one in Trinidad, the one that's coming up in September. Um, thank you, Dion. Um, normally for the Kosovo Under-23 tournament, we are anticipating 32 teams. Um, so it's, uh, it's a large contingent coming from various countries. Each country has uh, one, two teams per gender, or it's one team per gender. Um, and we are trying to really expose um, our Caribbean athletes to a high level of competition. And one of the things that, um, and this, this under 23 tournament was a brainchild of the, obviously of the Cayman Islands Volleyball Federation, um, because we saw it necessary um, to prepare our young athletes first at the Caribbean level, giving them the opportunity to play, and then expose them to North Saco championships. Um, and they had, now, now we are creating that opportunity for them. So, now they're competing against um, ECVA teams, that's the Eastern Caribbean countries they're coming in. Talking about uh, Kosovo teams, uh, and then they're, they're also inviting um, the North Seca, um Confederation, like USA, Mexico, um, Costa Rica, to fill the difference, to make sure that we have a full contingent of um, 16 teams per gender to participate in this event. 
So it's going to be a, a tremendous exposure for the girls um, and a great experience for the country with, with um, our first under-23 tournament. So is it just these two girls that's competing in September? No, in September we'll have the boys. Right now most of our boys are on vacation okay. Okay. Um, out of the country, so they'll start back their uh, training process mm -hmm. when they arrive, um, just before school starts. Mm -hmm. So for us, we'll have um, two teams per gender. So we'll have these okay. girls and another pair representing the Cayman Islands, and then four boys also representing Cayman Islands. Any so, names yet, or it's not? No, no, I don't want to. <laughs> you can't, you can't <laughs> no, release no, any no names yet. yet. So they, I want them to actually compete for their position. Mm -hmm. um, Although it's a small contingent of six guys training, um, we need to have them compete in order to make the team. So they still have some work to do before we make a final decision as to who those uh, gentlemen will be. The Which girls have know. already elevated themselves to another level in terms of their training because they have been here. And uh, we have fair idea who the girls are gonna be, but I still want to leave it up to some degree of competition um, at the last minute. All right. I'm I like that because I remember a couple of months ago we were speaking and you were telling me about the indoor um, volleyball program strengthening, but of course, you know, you guys were battling somewhat with getting kids to take up beach volleyball. Um, obviously, this tournament bodes well. You know, it shows that the program is developing. How did you select your teams and, and how has that beach program been coming along? Um, we are trying to s stimulate and grow in a sustainable way, beach volleyball on the Cayman Islands because we see it as a great opportunity through also sports tourism. Um, so the young players, and we have kept them together through um, the initial work of Coach Kevin, we have kept the players together, and they have competed in a number of local uh, events, and um, they have participated with uh, some of the older players, but we try to keep the younger players together um, in order to gain the experience locally, and then from that, their performances there, we have selected um, players. In the past, um, sometimes it was a bit of an entitlement for players just to make national teams. We are trying to make it more competitive, that you have to earn your position in order to represent Cayman Islands. I think that is the mandate of the CIVF. And of, of course, I've spoken to the honorable uh, sports minister on a number of occasions, and that is his idea. You have to compete in order to be uh, the best players possible to represent the island. And that is our whole, whole um, objective and mandate so far. All right, newly refurbished volleyball courts at the public beach. You guys, this tournament will be the first to christen it. Um, what's that moment like for you guys going into this tournament on a, such incredible courts? Coach Kevin? Um, I mean, I think so far it's actually been good. Um, just being able to have the space again to properly train and, and spread out. I think we were a little bit um, tight, you know, prior to this, only having one side of, uh, you know, towards the beach side uh, that we could utilize. Um, I think the training has gone well. I think it'll be good for the young players to be on, uh, you know, the home court, if you will, yeah. um, and to be able to actually represent. Um, but yeah, so far I think it's it's been going well. And Minister Bush, uh, how do you feel as Minister of Sports, of course, that Cayman is able to host a tournament of this magnitude for the first time ever? This is actually, this is very sweet. Mm -hmm. This whole beach thing started when, with the Olympic Committee, of which I was an executive member. We sat and we discussed where we want to go with certain sports and which sports we felt we would stand a better chance at. You being a former sportswoman yourself and people who are in sports understand sometimes it's a matter of numbers. Right. We are a very small country. The numbers are very small. We felt that not to put down indoor volleyball, but we would stand much better chance concentrating on the outdoors, on the beach, because you only need two players who are very serious and a good coach. We've got what everybody else wants. We got the beach. Yeah. We got the sun. And, on, and when the pros come here, they always talk about they like the ability that they can play and just go jump right into the ocean. Right. They love that. But people must understand beach volleyball and indoor volleyball is different. When you see young people, this age group, dedicate themselves to the beach, hats off. Beach volleyball is hard. Mm -hmm. It is not mm -hmm. easy. People must understand that. And to see where 
we have come from those tournaments met the, at that time the Secretary General uh, Carson Ebanks and the President of the Volleyball at that time went to Dominican Republic and how we pleaded, we got ourselves into Norseca and then the tournament started. No, this time is what I wanted. When I first met with the doc, I told him, you want money from the ministry? Give me youth programs. I'm not interested in a bunch of old people. I, <laughs> they can do theirs for recreation and have a good time, but we want to see young people. We need to give them the chance that we never had. Kevin understands. He was on the national team, and I managed it for volleyball, and I know the effort they put in. And when you see what they've done, and I like what Doc is doing, 17 and 15. Think about it. You have under 23. That is six years and eight years for our two or some of these young people. So in three to four years from now, they will be something to be reckoned with in this tournament. That's the way to do it. You build. You put them in there, make them take their licks, and make them learn. And make them, then they'll, when they'll come through, they'll come through the better for it. So I take my hats off to the Volleyball Association, what they've done. And I like what Doc is saying from the beginning. He says they're going to have to compete for every spot. It's not because I like you, because I don't like you. You give me good attitude, you give me good practice, and you give me the game as we coach, and you'll make the team. And to the young ladies, I'll say, remember, you're representing not only yourself, you're representing your family, but you're also representing a beautiful little country. Fight hard, carry yourself with dignity in class, and make us proud. And thank you all, because I know it's not easy on the beach. Thank you all very much. And either one of you can answer this. Um, what do you think is the appetite for beach volleyball competition in the region? And is this something Cayman should tap into more often? Um, the appetite is, uh, is great. Um, the world governing body is injecting more funding um, into beach volleyball for the Caribbean islands. Simply because, as the Honorable Minister just indicated, you only need two players. And the pathway to the Olympics is easier through beach than indoor. Indoor is almost impossible. So what we are trying to do is generate some interest both um, in indoor, create the, 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 the capacity in indoor, and draw these players back to the beach, hopefully. Um, they will see the opportunities to, um, to represent Cayman Islands. Um, there are so many tournaments for beach coming up, so um, all over the Caribbean. So this is just the, the Cayman has the second stop in the under-23 tournament. There are three other stops. Thanks. And next year, we're trying to make it a, a yearly event, so the, under, the youth players will get the great opportunity to, to harness their skills at an earlier age. Um, sometimes our athletes, uh, we, we expose them to international competition a little bit too late, so they don't have that sort of exposure and experience. So yes, the Caribbean, it's, it's difficult because um, there's a misnomer that our Caribbean kids love to play in the sun. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> they, I think they like to be indoors. But, um, but once they see uh, young people competing and being successful, I think it'll create the sort of uh, um, environment to, to, to attract more talent to the beach. Thank you guys so much for all that you're doing for youth beach volleyball or for youth volleyball on a whole. I appreciate that. I'm excited to see the tournament. And for the young ladies, how has preparation been leading up to Trinidad and, of course, in September? Um, lately, after realizing that we will be able to play in Trinidad, I have started to notice more what I have to work on. In each training, I strive to make more corrections and listen to coach and take his like teachings in more of a more of a different level. And yeah, I'm just going to training every day and trying to just make some more time and taking this really seriously. Um, it's definitely definitely a great opportunity and training has been really well so definitely putting in the hours and trying to get our level up there and do our best on the international stage if I could just stick one more in I'm so sorry um, will Cayman have any officials officiating in the tournament in September of course the 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 developmental plan takes into consideration all aspects of the game. So um, if I could just uh, divert, um, recently we had four coaches doing the beach volleyball program. Um, 
we had 10 coaches doing the indoor program, and we had five young people. We pushed for your young people under the age of 23 that did the uh, refereeing program. So we are trying to create that um, sort of a holistic approach to, to development because I think if you have great players, you also have to improve your officiating. You also have to improve your scoring. All those facets need to improve in order for um, the level of play and the level of performances on the court to improve. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, Dion. Ralph? Good morning, uh, Ralph Lewis from Caymanian Times. Um, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the panel. Thanks for having me. Uh, Mr. Minister, I applaud you on this um, presentation. I've always been concerned that we don't give enough visibility to sports in the Cayman Islands, and particularly in the media. We don't print enough, we don't write about it enough, and of course, we don't have support from the public. Um, can you say if this momentum will continue and do we need more support from the people in the community to come out and support our young people participating? Definitely, um, Mr. Lewis. This is something, just a press conference alone, will show you the significance that my ministry places on this, on these type of things. We have to do our job, and I know these days a lot of social media and all these various things, but we have to use, and this, as we go along, we're uh, checking off boxes of what we can do, how we can do it. We have to highlight these type of things, and especially when it's this age group, 17 and 15, going into an honor 23. That's an awesome thing. It's a beautiful place to start. You see, and we will be doing more of this when it comes to each individual sport. We will be working with them. Once, they, once we see where they're doing things the right way, you will definitely know about it. And yes, it is very important to have the public come out and cheer for these young people. In fact, a lot of our other sporting, regardless if you play volleyball or not, if you're a sports person, you should, when you hear your country's playing, you should take time and come out and cheer for your team. Because I've experienced this. It's nothing worse than playing in your own country and you're hearing more noise from people supporting the opposing team than from our people sitting there with their hands in their laps keeping quiet. So we need to come out and support these young people. So I know there'll be some people there with some pudding pans and some uh, big <laughs> cooking things to make some noise for these young ladies and the young gentlemen that will be there as well. And, and this will hunt, carry over into other sports? Correct. Okay. okay, so it's not just beach volleyball. No, sir. Once they're playing. doing things the right way, I will be working with them and supporting them, and the ministry will. We're more than happy to. Okay. I have a question for Dr. Thirol. Thirol, yes. Thirol, okay. Um, the minister ensured that youth were involved. Um, and maybe you've touched on this before, but can you elaborate on the importance of beach volleyball to our youth and other sports, of course? Well, beach volleyball is probably the fastest growing sport in the world today. Um, it has created greater opportunities for even our young people at the NCAA level in the US and even at um, World Championships and Olympic Games and stuff. Um, so getting our athletes to participate in beach volleyball to me is, um, is a tremendous opportunity for them to grow. And um, just to step back a bit to what you were saying about um, people um, coming out to support the team, we, we have a vision where this is the start, and we are trying to get into the communities because it is my opinion that if you have a, a stake in something, if you we are going to the communities and showing them what volleyball is all about, um, then they will come out and support. Um, recently, we had a, a couple of occasions where we visited primary schools on East End. And I'm trying to develop a program. I'm trying to go there to get that talent because the talent is tremendous. We just, they're, just, they're just not being exposed. Or uh, we are keeping everything this so far away that they're not able to. Uh, and those are the, also the future um, players and supporters. Their parents are coming out to support. Their aunts and uncles are coming out to support these players. So it's not only um, a myopic view in terms of developing the sport as a, as a, as a general view and really going into the various communities and extracting supporters, extracting players, officials, everything. So it's a, 
it's a, it's a bigger picture we're looking at. This is just this. I just see this as the, I don't want to use the proverbial tip of the iceberg, but yes, the tip of the iceberg. Okay, thank you. I have um, one more question for the young ladies. Um, the sun is hot outside, <laughs> and the sun as well. How do you cope with that heat, especially in our climate? Um, well, Coach Trevor and Coach Kevin would constantly say, stay hydrated, stay hydrated. So that's the first important thing. And eating before, having that energy on the court. Yeah, um, yeah and get, getting that shade when you can, even if it's um, five minutes, which we do during training, um, to get just a little bit of a reboot for energy, not in the sun. But yeah, I think we've come to get used to the hot sands during the summer. Um, personally, I love the heat. Heat that never bothers me and never tires me out. I could play game after game, back to back. Um, <laughs> and I always try to stay hydrated. I always do. I drink an eight cup of bottle, eight cup water bottle per training, to keep myself hydrated, and that just keeps me going. Okay, to be fifteen and seventeen, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> to be fifteen and seventeen. You don't feel the heat when you're having fun. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And we always stress to them, don't forget the sunblock. sunblock. And I think yeah. uh, hats, visors, uh, sunglasses, once they come up for one practice, if they, happen, if they don't have any of those things, they'll know to have it for the next one. If I may, Mr. Minister, for the older people, I think we should wear a sunblock and drink some water when we go to watch them and support them. Correct. <laughs> and stay in the shade. Stay in the shade. <laughs> uh, I wish you much success in the competition. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ralph. Ventisha, I would like to say a, a special thank you to the press. I'm sure Ventisha might do that too, but just the fact that you took time to come out here to see this, to ask questions to these young ladies and to the Federation, thank you all very much. It is very much appreciated. On behalf of my ministry, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Well, that wraps today's press conference. I would like to thank you all for joining us. And as Minister said, thank you very much to our media partners in the press for joining us today for this exciting announcement. We look forward to watching and cheering our national under-23 squad as they compete in September on home court. We again invite everyone out to cheer them on, to watch, and to be proud of our players as they compete under the Cayman Islands flag. Again, thank you for joining us and do have a great day.